James David Weir, I'm the director of Dovecote Studios, a uh, tapestry studio that was set up in 1912 but that has just moved into following a two year renovation programme, this extraordinary new building in a form of Victorian swimming baths in the middle of Edinburgh. Tapestry is just really exciting. It's, it may be slow to produce compared to some other, um, some other trades, but just making, making an object and it's, it's, I mean, it's sculptural as well because it's not like applying a, a pigment to a surface. You're making this bodily object which has got like an image and a colour that goes all the way through it and then it's a, a piece of cloth that started from scratch. It's amazing. I've uh, been working in, in tapestry for about 47 years as a weaver. When I was young, kids left school at 15. I was looking for something and it was an artistic uh, sort of vein to it, you know. I um, studied the tapestry course at Edinburgh College of Art, which was taught very much as a sort of fine art um, sculpture course almost. After that, I was doing my own weaving for myself to kind of um, learn the craft and working in related or unrelated industries. So I was doing textile conservation for a while, which is great because it means you get. I get to see tapestries from the back. <laughs> um, and so um, then when the opportunity came up to join the Dovecot, um, it was you know, too good to, to pass up at all. The studios had a history of working with an amazing collection of artists from David Hockney to Frank Stella. They had an equally astonishing list of clients from PepsiCo's headquarters in New York to the Queen Mother, to the British Library, to the Museum of Scotland and probably most importantly that third ingredient they had a skill uh, which is not something that is easily uh, regained once you lose it. Dovecot apprenticeship was quite intensive in these days you know it was all the drawing and uh, doing lettering and, and sort of you know a lot of technical aspects to scaling up drawings and, and uh, that sort of thing, you know, so it was, it was all manner of, uh, of skills that were, had to be learned. A tapestry weavers, they, it could be anything from just sitting at the loom from half past eight to half past four, just simply weaving could be working on designs, winding bobbins, choosing colours for the, the, for the tapestry. I mean, it takes maybe about a week to walk the loom and uh, from then on it's a case of getting the cartoon ready, blown up from the original design, inked onto the warps and choosing the colours and carrying on with the tapestry. I'd hate to see tapestry die out, you know, and so we're looking for young people to come into the business. There aren't that many courses around, so I would recommend um, really getting work experience or, you know, and getting like hands-on making experience, whether that's you doing it yourself or, or working with other institutions. We've been entirely supported privately and it surely is now the time for the public sector to recognise and possibly even to match fund what happens in the private sector to develop what is already a thriving but slightly fragmented sector, conceivably more fragile than we realise. At the time I was, wasn't sure how long tapestry weaving was going to last, but and it's, it's, uh, it's taken me through my whole life, you know. So, I, that's one of the biggest surprises to me as I sit here. <laughs>